Today we've got new drivers for 2023, the Tour Edge 723 models, the C723 and E723. We'll test them out. We've got Michael hitting the shots. We'll tell you everything you need to know about the tech, the features, all of it. Golfers, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and give this video a like, and then tell us in the comments what you think of the new 723 drivers from Tour Edge. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahol, the Second Swing Golf, joined today by Michael Geiger here at the Second Swing Tour Van in Minnetonka. And today we've got new drivers from Tour Edge, the 723 models, the C723 and the E723. Um, Michael, I think Tour Edge has uh, approached the, the golf market in a unique way by yes. kind of going after, I mean, in terms of sponsorships and stuff, you see a lot of players on the PGA Tour Champions playing Tour Edge. Right. And I think with good reason, because these products, I, can, I guess, in terms of the the demographics out there generally focused on maybe the lower swing speeds or maybe players needing forgiveness, but the C723 model in your hand does provide some performance for that higher swing speed as well. Absolutely. I feel like Tour Edge has sort of developed somewhat of a cult following over mm -hmm. the years. They're like you said, they're, they've kind of found their niche. They, they really focus on that kind of PGA Tour champions marketing and they don't have 10 different models at, at mm -hmm. you know, sky high price points. They have two really right. solid driver models one for kind of a higher swing speed, one for more of a moderate swing speed, mm -hmm. and they perform great. Right, and I think another piece of that too is that the products are you know, made and assembled in the USA, yes. which is a huge component and a lot of, uh, they get a lot of following, at least from obviously in, on the American side. A lot of uh, golfers in the United States really uh, appreciate that and respect that. Yep. So um, looking at these two drivers, I'll start with the E723, which is gonna be the moderate swing speed type of model. Um, they've added a couple things this year. Uh, specifically, you got this weight in the back that they haven't had that adjustability, that tuning option, uh, yeah. which has, in a sense, limited what uh, it's capable of in the fitting bay, obviously, with our fitters. And so I think that will really lift it into uh, a lot more of the conversations that golfers have when they're trying to decide on a driver. You've got this weight, you can put it in the fade setting, neutral, or in the draw setting. So a lot of possibilities there for our fitters. Absolutely, I, I think when people think about a high MOI driver, a very forgiving driver for kind of the more moderate swing speed players, they don't usually get or expect Mm -hmm. much adjustability that feels kind of like a like a low handicap driver right. um, so i think it's really cool that tour edge is kind of expanding that adjustability for for every golfer mm -hmm. and then also new this year uh, we hear all, all this talk about carbon in drivers yeah. quad carbon technology there's carbon in four places lightweight in this head um, and that basically just drives up that moi allows the tour edge engineers to reposition weight a little bit give you that high launch and also that ball speed. Um, in addition to a couple of other technologies that have been around in these drivers for a while, diamond face, VFT, faster ball speeds with little micro kind of diamonds mm -hmm. in the face design. Uh, and then the Ridgeback technology, which you kind of see here, um, contributes to that high MOI, also kind of stabilizes the club head. So those things are actually both uh, in, in both drivers, uh, but really the difference between the two models then when you go from the E723 to the C723 is just that um, the shape the center of gravity location, and then you can also see this weight here on the sole, right. which kind of contributes to that, moving that weight forward for a little bit lower spin. Yeah, absolutely. I think you see with Tour Edge, um, you know, just because, like I said, they don't have a million different models, they're still sort of on the cutting edge of the right. technology. They're, mm -hmm. they're following that trend, and they're still kind of pushing the boundaries of distance. Right. So, and in terms of the stock shafts now, I think th they there's not a ton of options versus maybe some other manufacturers out there, but the ones that they've chosen have been proven and have done really well. Mm -hmm. So in the lightweight model, the E723, right in this one, you have the Tensai AV Blue X-Link series, um, which has been a super successful model in various driver uh, driver club heads in the fitting base. And you also have the Air Speeder from Fujikura, which is another kind of a lighter weight design. You can almost get that as low as 40 grams. Um, another one really for those moderate swing speeds. Mm -hmm. And then in the C723, you also have the option here of the hazardous black and that's I think it's a fourth generation of that one it's been really good at lowering that spin and yeah. adding some distance to golfers so today we're going to do some testing you're going to hit the shots michael we've got the nine degree c723 model with that hazardous black and we've also got a ten and a half e723 with the tensai av blue x-link maybe swing that at a slower speed and yep. uh, uh we'll see what the results are but uh so far i mean we've been impressed by what they look like we've yeah. been impressed on some very initial kind of warm-up swings here so i'm excited let's do it all right mr geiger uh first things first right we gotta kind of get that feedback on the appearance of the driver. yes um and so i think with tour edge that's it, the last several generations have looked a little bit similar in the sense of that you there's kind of the visual aspect of that ridgeback technology and then kind of the 
the carbon zones that you see right. on the crown there. So talk to me about kind of how that feedback registers for you. It's interesting. So it's, a, you know, like you mentioned, there's kind of the black ridge yep. and then mm -hmm. there's kind of the gray, which kind of um, connotes kind of the carbon that you see yeah, on yeah. the top of the face. Um, it's sort of a, it's sort of a glossy finish, yeah. but it's not, it's not as glossy as yeah. you'll see. Right. Um, I think for those who are, you know, maybe they're living in Arizona or Florida, they get a lot of sun. I don't think it's going to be as big a deal. Yeah. You know, sometimes people worry about kind of the glare. Um, I think with the black and the gray, it's, it's not going to be a problem. You know, you see, it's, you definitely see that it's sort of a lower, uh, lower handicap player's profile. It's not, it's not massive, although there is, you know, um, there is a deepness there that does kind of help out with a little bit of that kind of confidence inspiring look. So um, all in all, it's a, a solid looking driver. Yeah, I think for me, I think what's cool about what they've done with that weight is it's not like it's, I mean, obviously from, from the crown, you can never really see that weight and stuff, but just from the performance aspect um, uh, for players that like to tinker, it's not, they didn't make it a gigantic, um, you know, change, right? Yeah. Like it's not like when you change the weight, it's not like you're throwing it way in the toe or way in the heel. Right. Um, I think that's a subtle way of kind of dipping their toes into it and seeing how it works and the feedback that they get for this model. But um, and maybe they alter it for f the future mm -hmm. uh, models. But I think that's a good start for them. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think we'll, we'll so we'll start with the, the C723 here, which kind of is a closer fit to what you would play. Right. Um, and then we'll go. This is the extra stiff 6.5 hazardous black uh, Gen 4 shaft. So we'll go from that and then we'll come back to the E723, maybe slow that swing down a little bit and. I'm, I'm curious because these have always been sneaky, really good in testing. Yes. So um, I think I'm excited for this. Yeah. Okay. There's the first swing. So tell the people a little bit about kind of your game. Sure. Driver tendencies, like maybe numbers to expect a little bit here too. Sure. So I think um, swing speed right around 110 yeah. um, as I get, you know, could crawl up to 112, 113, but around around 110, um, I'm typically a higher spin player, as you see, yeah. um, miss right. So this is a pretty good, yeah. uh, a, a pretty okay, good so barometer. That's, that's kind of the baseline for what you generally would see in the course. Maybe? Yes, this is a, a bit of a miss, but yes. Yeah, yeah. This, I mean, yeah. I'm not saying, yeah, because I've seen you hit the ball better than that, and I think that may have been like a heel <laughs> shot or something. Yeah, you are correct. Ooh, some extra ball speed on that one. Okay. So when you're testing new drivers, because we've done some testing quite yep. a bit now, um, is there a, a, a number, because you said you're high, kind of a higher spin player, is there a number that you, you're looking for? Like if you were to put a new one in the bag, this is the number it's got to be at? 2000s is great. Yeah. So anything under that 3000, this, that shot, you know, the first shot you saw kind of my stock miss, yeah. this would be the stock, this is what I'm looking for. This yeah. is a bit of a touch of a fade. Okay. 2,500 spin, I, you know, right. I would love to bottle this. And, right. I mean, and that, that's, a, that's a darn good tee shot. Yeah. I think everybody would take that one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Probably another slight miss there. I'm just looking at yep. Smash Factor. Yep. Missing the center of the face is something a lot of golfers do often, as I can speak to myself. So it's cool to see how the drivers perform and not everyone performs the same way. And so as this being a players oriented driver, um, I think it's still cool to see the ball in the fairway. Um, now, granted your, your misses, so to speak, are probably short, roughly 20 yards. Right. Um, in this, these first five shots, you got these two that were pounded, right? And then you have, you drop that smash factor below one, four, five, and then you get down into the 280 range. But, the ball's not veering off left or right too much. No, I mean, you're, you're not hitting all. fairways. Um, talk to me about look and feel maybe on, on those shots, whether you're talking about maybe the ones that you slightly missed or the ones you hit solid in the center. Um, what are your thoughts on those? Sure. So as you know, as you'd expect for a, a driver intended for a, you know, a lower handicap player, when you miss it, you, you feel the miss. Yeah. Um, there were a couple that were a little more closer to the middle that obviously feel great. Um, I think that the key is that dispersion. I think yeah. that there were a couple that were not the greatest of strikes as the uh, smash factor would indicate. Yeah. Right. And it's still, you know, Trackman's providing us a, a generous fairway, but they're still, yeah, they're I, in the ballpark. And so right. um, 
anytime you can have a, a low MOI head with a lot of for, uh, forgiveness, that's right. That's what we're looking for. Yeah. So I mean, we could bring up look at averages. This is five shots, and these are you know, again, I think potentially in a fitting we might um, look at the hit location and maybe get a couple more solid strikes to kind of dial it in a little bit. Sure. But, um, in terms of the the numbers here, you're averaging 3221. If we were to say take out maybe your two worst strikes, which would be these two up here, that spin gets down to kind of a range you're happier with. And right. clearly, as you can see, when you hit the ball solid, you know, you're in that 25, a little over 2500 range. So um, the spin is certainly going to be a, a lower spinning model rel relative to what maybe yes. you're used to. Yes, yes. Um, and then distance wise, you're climbing over 300 on solid strikes. And then if you miss it, boo hoo, you're averaging about 280 on those ones. Sure. Which I think there's a, you know, there's some sort of a misconception, I think, sometimes that, you know, uh, the drivers today, they're certainly really forgiving high MOI in that. But in some ways, you still got to hit the ball relatively solid to get the distance out of it. Definitely. And so there's still the forgiveness packed in here, I think, that definitely keeps up with the rest of the market. Absolutely. Um, any other feedback on the C723 for right now? Before we no, go? I think it, it, it delivers what it's what it's saying it's going to deliver. It's it's lowering yeah. the spin. Yeah. It's giving you the ability to, to, to shape it. I like I was able to hit my fade the way yeah. I wanted to, and uh, it's um, it's a really solid option at yeah. a really good price point. Right. Well, let's do the E723 now. Let's do it. Um, we'll slow that speed down a little bit. We're asking a lot of Michael here to uh, just. Right after ripping it at 110 miles an hour swing, we're gonna get you down into the 80s or 90s Listen, here. It's like Shohei Atani. You need to you need to mix the fastball with the off-speed stuff. That's true. The course will never expect it. Gotta keep them guessing. Well, I gotta say, those first two shots, it seems pretty easy to hit the ball straight. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, curve. I think single digits both times. Right. See, that's a, okay. Did you? How did that one feel? I'm just curious on this shot. That one felt surprisingly it? decent. It was yeah. still a bit low on the face. It okay. was kind of healy, but that still felt Cause, pretty good. Because I mean, you slow down your swing quite a bit there, but you still got 200 yards total. Yeah. And I think so. For this type of player with that driver, like you're gonna need like I think people get so caught up in low spin, mm -hmm. uh, farther distance, right? And to get that as low spin, sure. But if you're swinging 80 miles an hour, you probably need more spin right. with your driver. Yeah. Um, because anything in that kind of 2,000 range, if it's like 2,000 or lower, you're probably not getting the distance you need right. if you're swinging it this slow. And so that's why I was kind of encouraged to see this. I mean, the spin with this driver has been pretty solid. And then to see it climb a little bit higher is probably a good thing. Actually. Definitely. Um, I think so many people think low spin means more distance. And for a lot of players, that's true. Um, but if you're swinging it at 80 or 81 or you know in the low 80s, mm -hmm. it's probably not what you're looking for. Absolutely. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. Um, here's our, our sort of data here. Talk to me now, um, just look and feel wise because this is two different drivers, and we can compare for the sake of look a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I imagine you got the the C723 is going to be a little smaller, right? Yes. Than the E723, it's going to be the E723 probably looks a little bit larger. Right? Yeah, the okay. E723, it's it's sort of like the C723 after the holidays. You know, it wasn't working out quite as much. It put on <laughs> yeah. just a few pounds around the perimeter. Yeah, yeah, um, sure. It's not quite at its fighting weight, but for you know, for an 80 to 95 mile an hour swing speed player, yeah. this is what they want. It's a very confidence inspiring aesthetic. Um, it's it's very much similar. It's just a little bit more, exactly yeah. like I said, it, it kind of gives you the feeling that right. I can miss this driver, right. which you can. There's visually, there's more to look at. Yes. There's more to see when you yes. put the club down at, at address. Yeah. Um, and I think the, the forgiveness aspect showed in the testing. And I think I say that because um, your smash factor was actually a little bit higher. Um, we got up to 148 a couple times. I think you were, it seemed like it was easier for you to, to, to get a higher efficiency. And get, again, you're swinging slower, so maybe that's part of it. But to see, and that was even with more loft, right? Because we had this driver at 10 and a half degrees. Mm -hmm. So in general, like 
smash factor should go down when you have more loft on the driver. Right. But it was more efficient for you here. I think that's just because of how easy it is to hit with some height and with some speed and with enough you know, distance out there for golfers that are watching this that might need a new driver in that kind of 80s miles an hour. I think it's this is really good for that category. Yeah, I think when you see that dispersion and when you look at the stats, you see when I'm hitting the the higher swing speed, when you're swinging at 110 miles an hour, that's when you want to drive that spin down. Yeah. And when you're swinging at 85 miles an hour, that's when you want to go up. Right. And relative to my tendencies, it, this this did that. It's, yeah. um, mm -hmm. you know, when you're, when you're trying to hit it about 200, 220, you want that ball up in the air. You yep. want to keep that thing floating. Um, and uh, I was very impressed by the results of, of really both drivers. Right, right. Because I think, in, and, and like you said, it, it, there's sort of a kind of a, you can, like a cult following out there for Tour Edge. And I think there's, I mean, there's not, you don't get that type of a following without delivering in, in the products that they uh, engineer, right? So I think, this is really good testing. And I, again, this is very initial stuff and we're going to have more tests in the future where we do that apples to apples comparison mm -hmm. of, for example, a C723 versus some of the lower spin models, the Stealth 2 Plus and the Paradigm Triple Diamond, G430 LST, you name it. Um, but I think initially this is just, it, it's cool to make sure that the club does what it's supposed to do and what Tour Edge tells us it does. And that, at least from your feedback here, it seems to be the case that yeah. it, the, the clubs do what Tour Edge says that they're going to do. Absolutely. All right, Michael, testing complete there. Um, very initial testing. Um, and I think we, we saw at the very end of kind of testing there, we talked about how the clubs do what Tour Edge mm -hmm. says. Uh, but first of all, just again, just kind of summarize maybe the two club heads, how they're different, and then we'll kind of go into who they're each four. Sure. So you saw, we, let's start with the E723. So this is going to be kind of the the more moderate swing speed player, the one who's who actually wants their ball to spin a bit more, who wants to get it up in the air, maybe get a bit more distance, be a bit more forgiving. Um, then you have you know the C723, which is that's your your Bernhard Longer, that 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 higher swing speed, um, the the lower handicap player who's looking to on, on the opposite way drive their spin down and kind of mm -hmm. flatten their ball flight out. Right, and I think with the C723 also you get, you know, I, we you talked a little bit about how your fade was able to show up there a little bit. Yep. Whereas we didn't really see that actually with the C7 or the E723. Again, you're swinging differently and slowing it down, but um, that fade didn't really show up. It was just basically a dead straight ball right. every time. So um, another aspect to the differences between the two, a little bit more workability with the C723. Um, and then the E723 is just gonna give you a straight ball flight. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit more launch and, and spin maybe than you're used to. And so depends on what the golfer's looking for. But I think the drivers deliver. And in terms of the testing, you obviously had pretty positive remarks on the yeah. feel and the look and all those aspects. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it checks a lot of boxes. It's distance wise, it was it was solid. I think we've seen in past models, the, the distance and the ball speed of the of Tour Edge has really yeah. been pretty competitive yes, with those has. sort of mm -hmm. top tier drivers. I think we saw that that trend continue. Um, we saw the forgiveness, especially so with the E723. And then as we've, we've, we've kept banging that kind of spin drum, that's really the, right. been the, the thing, that the box that these have both also checked. Sure. Well, uh, don't want to get teased too much here, but we have Mr. Kevin Kraft coming back with us here to test some drivers head to head throughout all of the new models in 2023. We will throw Tour Edge in the mix, so stay tuned. If it's not up on the channel yet, it will be soon. Uh, but otherwise, golfers, um, Make sure you stay tuned to the channel for more content, whether it's Tool Reg, whether it's any other brand. We're going to do these comparisons more often. we got more things in the works that we're excited about. Uh, but, Michael, thank you for joining. Really uh, great stuff here from Tool Reg, and I think the 723 models will be awesome in the fitting bays. Always a pleasure.